Okay, here we are again guys. Let's have a quick look at how to put an image inside a shape in Affinity Designer on the PC this time and make a nice little image just like that one. Think of this as a PC tutorial. Oh, but first up, let's subscribe, shall we? Before we continue, can I urge you to take a moment to tap the subscribe option below this video. It's completely free and puts you under no obligation. It does, however, help me and I really appreciate it. If you're already subscribed to this channel, then I thank you very much. So, let's continue. Open a new document. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. I just used an A4 page, transparent background. Simple. This exercise is only to try out the options that you need to create this example. Fairly straightforward. So now we have our blank document. We can begin to create our shape. Let's begin by putting two basic shapes on the canvas. First a rounded rectangle and then a heart shape overlaid on top of that. Notice that I've now got both layers selected and we're going to weld them together and you have to have them both selected for this to work. Now for this action we need to make sure that the geometry tools are in the toolbar. If they aren't already then go to view, select, customize toolbar and select the geometry tools and then drag them up to the top of the toolbar. And there's the geometry tools up the top there. You can see them there. And that's what you want because we're going to use the first one of those. Now we can select the two layers, which we had selected before, and then click on the Add tool. That's the first one in the Geometry toolbar. Presto, one shape and one layer. Now we can use that as a mask for any image we like. So let's find an image. Again, Affinity Designer makes this really easy for you. Go to the Stock Studio and find an image that catches your fancy. And I'm using one there. You can see that image. It looks like a possibly a Muslim woman, but somebody with a, with a face covering anyway, and looking very much like that. Doesn't matter. Drag the image onto the canvas. Doesn't matter if it's too big and blocks out your shape. That's just what we want. Now we can drag it into position behind the mask. And that's what our next step will be. And you can see I've got the image nicely centered there in the frame, the red and the green lines, telling me that it's centered. And of course, you need um, the snap tool to be on to show those center lines. Now, positioning the image. This bit can catch you out if you aren't careful. Only drag the image down into the shape layer halfway. Not right past it but until the little blue bar shows as a slightly offset or setback line, then let go of the mouse button. Now when you drag that image down, you hold on to the image, not the whole line there, the blue layer, just the little icon. Drag that down till it's halfway through the blue shape layer there, and then move it slightly to the right and it will offset as you see it there. If you go all the way, you'll just have the blue shape on top of your image, which is not what you want. And you can see even on the left hand side there, although the image itself hasn't moved down yet, it does appear to be so in the main canvas. And there we go. You can see the new shape where the image is selected, filling the shape. Because the image is still selected, you can move it around to position it where you want maybe slightly downwards and slightly to the left. I think I'll move that. Now you can see that I've expanded the grip of the shape layer and the image layer. Ignore the fact that the second one is a curve. Um, you can convert the image to a curve, but it doesn't truly turn into a curve. So you can leave it as an image if you like. Open the group and select the image and you can move it around for best effect now. So even though you may have not got the image selected anymore, you can still select the image by expanding those two layers and selecting the image in the second part. And it will highlight there as you can see it, and you can move it around. 
Now we can export our image, which is perfect. And there's the finished image. Because you've got a transparent layer and you export to PNG, you're exporting a transparent file. And that's the image you'll end up with. Now you could cut that out on a Cricut silhouette really easily. And you could then use sublimation um, exercises to affix it to whatever you like. Mugs, cups, pillowcases, all sorts of things. Perfect. Now, let's try the shapes as separate objects. We want to do something slightly different. Now, this I'm just showing you this, and it's the last, um, the last exercise, but it's so clear now. I have a rounded rectangle and a heart shape, entirely separate, just as we did at the first. Flowers in one, and the woman in the other. The combinations are endless. Use letters, use drawings, use shapes, it's your choice. And thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it.